Hi, my name is George Edbury, Dixie Line Contracting out of Leverkin, Utah. Uh, last summer, Jerry approached me with the concept of trying to provide approximately 66,000 watts of continuous power for their big building project that they have out here. Being in Zion National Park, there's no power lines. There's no way to get power lines in here, of course, because it is a national park. There's quite a few issues with that. So um, they didn't want to run a generator all the time. And so they said, can you do this? And I said, well, yeah, we can do it. We've done some like this before. But uh, this one's going to be a little different than the average. And so he gave me a spreadsheet from the electrical engineer showing all the loads they had. And they wanted approximately a three to five day bridge, hopefully, without having to have the generator run most of the time when uh, they weren't here. And if they were here full time, then it might need to run part of the time. So what we wound up doing was uh, starting out with, you know, most, most inverter technology doesn't allow you to stack inverters to the point where you can have this whole big bank of them running one project. Uh, there are a couple of brands that do that, but we went with the Xantrex brand, the uh, XW series inverters, because they are very user friendly. Uh, not only are they reliable, but we were familiar with them, so we kind of stuck with that. And in order to accommodate the various load centers that they had in the house, we put one bank on here. This particular bank runs the um, uh, outlets and heating systems in the house and so forth. And the one on my right is strictly for the mechanical room. That's running water pumps, uh, fire suppression pumps, um, you know, what you see in this room. And then there's another bank we'll look at later on the other side of this wall that is strictly for lighting. Uh, the house has a lot of backlit marble floors that take a fair amount of energy, so we dedicated one bank just to that. And the really cool thing about uh, the way Xantrex has done this is in a solar system, you don't want to have everything on standby all the time. So, you know, you don't want these, these are all transformer based inverters, so that means you've got a big coil of copper in there that has to be lit up all the time and that takes energy so what we decided to do was use this product where this is set up as the master unit in this cluster and the remaining ones are set up as slaves well these are all asleep until a sufficient load comes on that they need to wake up so basically you've got you know I don't know the exact number but it's something like 30 watts of energy just to keep this on standby and then of course it you know wakes them up as they go but it's so instantaneous. That's, that's what we love about their equipment. You have almost no voltage drop and it's just like bang, immediate. You can turn a big heating compressor on, you can turn air conditioning on, you can turn whatever. And in a split second, they're all on and going full blast. So we've been, we've been really happy with that. Um, we needed a way to tie all of this together. Because one of the things that Jerry said is that you're gonna have to be able to watch this thing from down in the valley. And so that was a little bit of a challenge. And I know that when when we first approached Xantrex about it, they said, uh, good luck, call us and tell us how it works. <laughs> so we worked pretty closely with them and we actually, we actually succeeded. So what we wound up doing for being able to monitor uh, the equipment was we used a, what's called a gateway from Xantrex, that's these black boxes here, uh, one for each cluster of inverters and one for the charge controllers that you will see on the other side of the wall in a minute. And they collect the data from all of, you know, the inverters and charge controllers and they put it up here on this screen, which uh, at a glance, I don't know if you can zoom in on this or not, it doesn't really matter, but on each, on each line here, it's telling you what the output, the consumption of each cluster of inverters are, and then this one is telling you what your incoming uh, kilowatt production is from the actual array. So if I was in the valley and I was on another computer and I dialed into the computer, which is in here, this is the, the main house computer, when you uh, go on top of any of these lines right here, you can get a, a device and then you can put your information 
on a on a meter and another piece of information on another meter and then you can drag this whole thing off to the side so you can basically fill the whole screen up with all of your devices and and see what's going on simultaneously and then the next thing that they asked us to do is they said well what happens if something happens you know we don't want you to always have to come up here so what we wound up doing for that was two things uh, this is a plain old Sensophone 800 here. It's something that people use for monitoring the power in their cabins and whatnot. But it gives you a set of dry switch contacts that you can dial into and, you know, actually manipulate and make it do things. So the first thing that happens if we dial this is it looks for the condition of these relays. I don't know if you can see that, but these relays over here. When these are all lit up, that means that everything is functioning as it should. Now the reason these are not lit up on top is because that's for the generator and the generator's not on right now. But if any one of these lower lights goes out, this immediately dials us and gives us a status report of which, gener or which inverter went down and uh, we can turn around then and dial back into this, enter a security code into it, and it'll give us access to starting the generator, which is pretty neat. Okay, now we're on the other side of the wall from where we were just a minute ago. Um, what we have on this back side are all of the charge controllers that come and bring the higher voltage power from the uh, arrays and step it down to our battery voltage, which in this case is 48 volts. Um, most of our arrays operate at approximately 300 volts. These will allow them to go all the way up to 600. Um, what we have to do because we're up here in the mountains is uh, lightning is a huge issue up here. I mean really huge. We spend probably 30% of our time fixing other people's arrays that they forgot to put lightning arresters on. So uh, what we did, and you'll see this later up at the arrays themselves, there are lightning arresters that filter the power directly at the solar panels and then there are these that uh, filter it further before it goes into the batteries. And that's because we have to filter it above 300 volts up there and we have to filter it as low as 48 volts down here. So, and then on this other side, I don't know if you can rotate that at all, but this is the uh, last of the three clusters of inverters. This is from here to here. It is four 6,000 watt inverters tied together as a 24 kilowatt cluster. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have them separated. This one runs the lighting in the house. The one on the other one, on the other side of the wall runs outlets and heating and so forth. And then the last one runs this mechanical room. But combined, they produce 66 kilowatts. So on this side over here, uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna simulate in just a second a power outage. Because one of the things that Jerry wanted to accomplish here was something that would not require any user intervention if there was a power outage, you know, like uh, the, the homeowner doesn't have to be trained here. So what, what these are are transfer switches for each of the clusters of inverters. And it doesn't matter which one goes down, it will start the generator, it will roll over, it will run on the generator. When the condition is corrected that caused the problem in the first place, it all reverses and goes back to just the solar. So I'm going to uh, step aside here again and we will we will take the inverter out that runs the lighting in this room so you can actually see how long the delay is. Okay, so now we're going to simulate a power outage. And here we go. I'm going to get into... Oops. I have to program this to make it do it. Okay, here we go. Lights went out, it's approximately, and you'll notice that some lights went out here. Now the generator starts. And there will be approximately a five second delay, and there you go, you're on. That would be the longest power outage that you could possibly have if it went down. And now, the next thing that we're gonna wait for here, just briefly, is, uh, while that generator's on, it's going to take advantage of that power and charge the batteries. We're just waiting for it to synchronize here. It takes about a minute. So now 
now you can see that uh, after a short synchronization period, every one of these inverters is producing the same amount of power uh, to charge the batteries, but at the same time it's actually running the loads. So now we're going to simulate a correction of the uh, power, whatever the problem was being restored. And so. about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, there it goes. That was, that was the most amount of time that you would possibly have to wait for the thing to correct itself and go back on. So we're pretty happy with that.